Well, I think the, the, the decision to uh, enlist the services of a physician to take your own life or to have euthanasia administered to you actually is a very big deal, which is why the, the law in most states in the United States still prohibits it, except, in, except if you live in the Northwest. Uh, and euthanasia is legalized in some parts of Europe, but you know, it's not the norm by any stretch. It, it, it is a very big deal, I think, and here's the reason. Theologically, I think it's, for a Christian, I think it's a big deal because the timing and manner of a person's death ultimately belongs to God. That is, and to take that into our own hands is to usurp a prerogative that belongs only to God. Um, the other reason that's a big deal is because it's impossible to keep a voluntary request for assisted suicide or euthanasia strictly voluntary. And here's the reason for that. Let's imagine that you, that you and I are, we've got an, our elderly father who's got a terminal illness. His doctor said he's going to be dead in six months. Uh, to treat him and to keep him comfortable would be, is going to be a considerable expense. It's going to deplete uh, a good bit of the, uh, the sizable estate that he's going to pass on to you and me. Uh, and so we start to have discussions with him and say, Dad, you know, you sure you don't want to just get this over with now, not you know, not endure all this, all the dying process, not throw your estate down a medical rat hole, uh, and just be done with this. It seems like everybody wins if we just kind of get on with this. And we sort of we begin to talk more forcefully and more frequently about it. And he's frail and elderly to begin with, and so after a while. We've succeeded in twisting his arm to sign this euthanasia or assisted suicide declaration, not so much because he's tired of living, but because you and I are tired of his living. Okay. Now, under the law, that would be a felony in the states where that's legal. But guess what? Who would ever know that we've had these kinds of very coercive discussions with our dad? Nobody would know that we've pressured him into this. And I think that's, the, that's mainly the reason why there's no way even in principle to protect the request for this and keep it fully voluntary. Now the other sort of related issue to this is the issue of turning off life support. And it's not uncommon for doctors and families to hold on until the very last minute where doctors say, well, medicine's done. We can't help you anymore. I think it's okay for a patient to say stop to medicine when further treatment is futile or when the burdens outweigh the benefits of any specific treatment. I remember wheeling my father-in-law out of, out of the hospital just a few months before he died. He had very complicated surgery, complications. He was in the hospital for over three weeks. And I remember pushing him out in that wheelchair and, he, and he, he whispered to me, come close, he wanted to talk to me. And he said, in just a whisper, he said, don't ever bring me here again. And what he meant by that was that I'm done with doctors and hospitals. All they've done is screw up my life, and I'm done with them. And I think what he, meant, what he really meant, though we never said it like this, but he, what he really meant was that I will, I will live out the rest of my days as from God's hand gratefully, but without tubes, treatments, and technologies that I don't want. And I think that's okay to do that under, the, under those conditions because the sanctity of life does not mean that we are obligated to keep everyone alive at all times and at all costs. That, I think, is making an idol out of earthly life and making a theological statement that I really don't think we want to make, that earthly life is the highest good. I mean, theologically, that's not true. It's, the, it's a penultimate good. The ultimate good for human beings is our eternal fellowship with God. And therefore, I actually think it's possible to delay someone's homecoming by keeping them on life support. And that, I think, could be a way of playing God. But you are not killing your loved one when you turn off life support, it's the underlying disease or condition 
that's the cause of death. And therefore, it's not a violation of the sanctity of life and not necessarily a violation of the mandate that thou shalt not kill.